Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to do a TIG welding joint request. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name is Dusty. To all the arc heads who watch the show every week, what's up? Welcome back. As always, I appreciate you tuning in each week. And to anybody that is new to the channel, welcome. I encourage you, if you're interested in TIG welding, to bounce back into my catalog and take a look at all the different videos I've done up to this point. If you're a fan of TIG welding, I do all things TIG welding on this channel. My favorite thing to do hands down is TIG welding art. I do two-dimensional and three-dimensional art pieces where I basically take all the experience of about 18 years of TIG welding so far and use it to do art pieces that challenge me in every way I can imagine. As well as the art pieces on this channel, we also do how-tos, uh, demos like I'm gonna do today. And as well as that, I also do TIG welding gear reviews, gear breakdowns and stuff like that. So if you're into TIG welding, I encourage you, like I said, bounce back, check out some of the previous episodes. If you enjoy what you see, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the videos, it really, really helps my channel. At this point, I'm still a small channel and I'm really trying to grow what I'm doing here. So I got a message from a viewer asking me specifically to do a demo on a joint he needed help with. So shout out to Dan Creer. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right, but Dan hit me up on Instagram. Again, hit me up on Instagram. My Instagram handle's right there. You can send me questions. You can send me uh, suggestions for episodes and whatnot. Hit me up on there. Uh, I'll do everything I can to help you out. So let me just bring the message up here. So Dan said, can you do a demo welding a piece of two inch by two inch by quarter inch aluminum angle, the end, to a flat piece of plate. Specifically on the inside corner, what's the direction of travel? Where do you start and stop? So what we're gonna do, I popped on out to the scrap rack I got here, had a little look. I had a piece of two inch by two inch by quarter inch uh, aluminum angle. So I cut off a piece of it. I got a piece of plate here. Uh, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you what I would do to go about tacking this in place here. And then uh, we'll kind of talk about weld planning and uh, figure out which way we wanna do it. We'll start with tacking it up and then we'll go from there. So before we get going, let's fire up the machine. I'll show you what I'm gonna use for settings and gas and then my torch, and then we'll uh, get into it from there. Okay, so today we are gonna use the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. This machine's super simple and super dope. I use it for almost every episode I do here. So uh, let's get into it. If you wanna learn more about this machine, I have a link in the description below and it's a full review and breakdown of this little machine here. All right, what we're gonna do for settings here today, we're gonna change this to alternating current. Very simple. Uh, for amperage, let's turn this up. We're gonna run probably about 140, give or take. It's 245. Close enough. Uh, no downslope. Uh, post flow, we can turn that down a little bit. I was just doing some stainless in there. Five seconds. So for balance, we're running about 35% on the positive side. Uh, for frequency, we're on about 100 hertz. This should be good enough. Uh, half a second of pre-flow, no upslope. Running the foot pedal as well, super simple foot pedal. Uh, works pretty good. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's what I'm doing for a machine setup. Okay, so let's break down the torch here. What I'm using is a 332 setup. I got a gas lens in there, so it's a gas screen for a 26 style torch. I'm using a 2% lanthanated tungsten. I love the lanthanated tungstens for what I do in this studio here. They seem to work great with this machine. I'm using a number eight. Uh, it is a ceramic or alumina type cup from Michael Furick. Uh, Michael Furick, you make great stuff. So I'll trust you on this one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I use this cup all the time. It's great. It's a number eight. Very simple. I got a slight little ball on the end of the tungsten there. Uh, and that's pretty much good to go. We should be ready to rock. Okay, so let's go over the parts real quick here. So I got a 3 16 piece of plate here. It has been wire brushed and hit with acetone, so it's nice and clean. I got my two by two by quarter inch aluminum angle there. It also has been cleaned up with a wire brush. It has been hit with acetone. I have very nicely uh, detailed the top edge around the corners. Uh, detail your parts, people. Come on, we don't want, we don't want no sharp edges on stuff. So everything's nice and, sh nice and uh, clean here. Uh, nice and detailed, ready to rock as if it was going out to a customer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna position it like so, because Dan really wanted to see the inside and how I go about doing that. So what I'm gonna do is I need to figure out how I wanna tack this thing in place. So one general rule of thumb I have when tacking something together is I always tack on the ends of passes. So never will you see me put a tack in the middle of a run. Reason I don't like doing this is because when you establish a nice bead that's been heated up properly exactly the way you need to, 
if you have to go over a tack somewhere in the middle of your run, you're gonna have a large bump or something to go around or contend with to make a nice smooth weld. So always put your welds uh, usually, or sorry, always put your tacks near the ends of where you're gonna be starting and stopping from. So in this case, I will probably do tacks on the edges like so. And then if I were to spin it around, I'll probably do a tack out here as well. Tacking is also nice because we can give it a good wash a little bit. It's gonna help us to heat this material up because this guy obviously is much thicker than this here. So we have more material to heat up in this piece. So a nice uh, generous blended tack is gonna help us to get this uh, wetted in nicely and kind of preheat our material a little bit. Another little rule of thumb I always make sure I do is when I tack, I don't just tack one spot and then leave it and go tack something else because what's gonna happen is if you tack one little spot like so, what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna start here and weld our way in. If I start on a tack that I've just done a dinky little small tack on, as soon as I hit it with any kind of heat, if it's under any load, it's gonna pop and break. So when I do a tack, I always tend to do a little two-stepper. So I'll do a dab, dab, and then I blend it in nicely and I make sure that when I start my weld, I'll start somewhere over here. So I'm not even affecting the tack on this side. So when I do my tack here, here, and on the back side as well, I'm gonna make sure that I wash a good two-stepper. So again, it's gonna heat up our material nicely, but it's also gonna give us a little bit of beef <laughs> that we can, uh, we can bite into to start with. And uh, that way we're not gonna pop any tacks when we go into the actual weld joint. So because I'm, in, uh, I'm a left-handed welder, I'm gonna be running from this side into the middle and then around. I need to think about where I want to put my button. How many times do you see somebody do something really nice and there's a weird button just chilling in the middle of like nowhere and it's just been a lack of planning. So what I always like doing is taking an actual second to think about which way I wanna do my welding here. So obviously Dan asked to see this as kind of like the show zone uh, or the money, the money shot or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm not gonna put my button anywhere in there. What I probably will end up doing is start over here. So I'm gonna weld out from there. It's gonna get my piece nice and hot. And then what happens is when I come around the backside here, I'm gonna be able to put my button right on the end there. For example, if Dan really wants this to be the money shot here, you're not even gonna see the button. It's just gonna be a weld that flows in, goes around the corner and flows out. So that's what we're, our goal is there, is we wanna organize and plan before we start welding to show exactly what we wanna be doing. Okay, I'm thinking about where to start with my tacking. I'm gonna start I'm going to start probably out here. It's going to be easiest to heat up out that way. Here we go. And then I'm going to do this one next. This one's going to be second easiest to heat up and we're slowly going to heat this plate up as, or this piece up is the idea. So here we go. And then last up is gonna be the most difficult one to heat up here, so we're gonna start with this spot last because now we've given it some time to heat up from those two tacks to begin with. So there we go. So this is gonna be very difficult for me to film. So I'm gonna film from a distance here. And what we're going to do is basically I'm going to try and get my angles good uh, as good as possible without trying to or without contacting the camera. I'm still wire brushing here as I go. Wire brush in one direction if I can. There we go. So again, I'm going to kind of weld from a distance here. I'm going to try not to contact the camera. The camera is going to be a little difficult for me to work around with this one. But here we go. Let's try it out.
Okay, so we're gonna round the corner here before we go inside, and then I'm probably gonna move the camera after that one. Okay, there we go. So let's reposition. Yeah, I gotta figure out a way to weld this without bonking the camera. So I'm gonna be welding from inside. I'm gonna have to top feed. Top feeding is gonna be the way to go here because obviously I wanna feed this way, but I can't really do that. So I'm gonna top feed. It's gonna let gravity do, the, uh, do its thing and pull everything to the bottom edge. We'll do the best we can. Okay, okay, we're doing all right. Let's finish this up while it's hot. This is gonna be the toughest one to film. All right, so I, I apologize. My torch is gonna to kind of be in the way for this one. Uh, this, is the, this is the tricky one here, so I'm gonna do the best I can. Okay, that one turned out all right. That was the worst weld of the bunch, so we'll finish it off here. Okay, home stretch here. I'm gonna move the camera again, because this one's gonna be in my way a little bit. Okay, here we go, home stretch. Gonna recenter that button. Woo! Here we go. Let's stop and take a look. My hands are smoking. Okay, so there we go. Uh, as you can see, you. I'm not very happy with this one. This one. It uh, turned out a little bit dirty in the corner there, which I am pretty unhappy with. I think it might have been a little bit of arc deflection because I had to hang out there for a second to get it to flow properly the way I wanted it to when we came out of it. But overall, everything was wedded properly. We got the leg lengths pretty equal, which is good. 
As you can see, when we came up and went around the corner, that one turned out not too bad. The weld profile stayed virtually the same the whole way. And then around this side, not too bad. Uh, it was a little bit tricky for sure. Um, I, I'm finding out that uh, filming this while I'm welding is adding another variable of difficulty. It's really tough to weld around a camera. Um, I've heard people complain about it before, but it really is difficult. So anyway, we got it done. These are the straightaways and the home stretch there that uh, worked out not too bad. But there it is. There's the inside. So Dan really wanted to see that. I hope that worked out well for you, Dan. I hope I could help you in any way. But there it is. Uh, we got the weld on the inside that turned out not too bad. We got our button tucked away all sneaky like on the back side so nobody will see it. And uh, yeah, I'm decently happy with that. Woo! Okay, so that was it. That was a weld challenge for sure. We got it done, like I said. I'm not terribly happy with it. If I was doing this for uh, an actual client or something like that, uh, or a customer, I, I would take a little more time to kind of work around and get things set up. But overall, the approach that what I went with, with uh, my torch angle and everything is exactly what I would do in the real world. So uh, Dan, I hope I could help you out, man. This was a really, really good question. It was fun. I've never actually, addressed the specific well joint before. So I really, I'm happy that this one came my way. Uh, I'd learn from it for sure. Uh, and yeah, hopefully made me a little better in the long run. So to everybody watching, I really hope you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this one, even though I said, again, didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. Ah, it's gonna bug me, but that's all good. Uh, we're gonna let it go and to anybody else. Hit me up on Instagram. If you have any weld joints that you wanna see me attempt, uh, hit me up on there. I'm not promising I'll do everything that comes my way because I get a fair amount of messages and I can't do everything that comes my way. But if you hit me up with a good one, uh, I might give it a whirl. Again, I teach people to TIG weld by distance. Uh, I have a program on my website. You can go right there, pacificarctigwelding.com. Pop on over there. Um, I have a little bit of information on the course there. You send me an email. What we'll do is we'll start chatting a little bit back and forth. I'll find out if kind of uh, what I'm offering is gonna be able to help you out. But basically, I take people from zero experience. I take them to be able to do uh, very confidently most weld joints that they'll come across with aluminum TIG welding. So if you're interested in that, hit me up on my website, say what's up, and we'll get in touch. We'll talk a little bit about it a little further. And finally, the last thing I go over on my episodes is a random act of kindness. It's a challenge I issue at the end of every episode now. Uh, the world needs as much positivity as we can. So in the name of you enjoying this show today, go out and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. If you see a guy fall down a set of stairs, um, go, go help him out. Uh, help him back up, make sure he's cool. Uh, if you see someone carrying their groceries to the car, help him out. Uh, write, write something nice on a stranger's Instagram, just anything. Just do something nice to make someone feel good today. So again, I'm exhausted after this one. I'm gonna go have a coffee and try and get back at it here in the studio. I got an art project on the go. But to everybody that watched all the way to the end, I appreciate you so much. I really, really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you're doing good. I'm thinking about you and uh, we'll talk soon. Peace.